Hey guys, I am over at SeaWorld Orlando today for a hard hat behind the walls construction tour. So let's go inside and see what they have to say and learn some new things and get some cool shots. Uh, I'm Brian Andralzik, I'm the VP of Design and Engineering here at SeaWorld, and we are really excited to have you out here on Icebreaker's construction site. So uh, we have uh, made a lot of progress, as you can see. Uh, there's a coaster that's appeared here in the last couple of months, and we're uh, wrapping the construction up here for our uh, Spring 2020 opening. So what we wanted to do today was kind of point out some of the key features of the ride, now that they're up and you can see them, and sort of talk about what we're doing here on site right now. So we're standing in the ride station. You guys are all in the loading area right now. So you'd be standing right behind those air gates as the train pulls in and you get ready to ride. Um, we are wrapping up the station. As you can see, we have our electrical in place and now we're working on lighting and paint and just those finishing touches that are really going to bring this, uh, bring this out and uh, be looking great. So you can see the, the ride track behind me, but one of the key features of the ride that you might not really think about is this uh, transfer track right here, our switch track. So this is a high speed switch. It's a pretty unique feature uh, from a roller coaster standpoint. So this is gonna take you horizontal over onto our transfer track, and it's going to allow us to run two trains with a forwards and backwards launch. So once your train pulls out and you roll onto the launch track back here, You'll start out with a backwards launch, and that backwards launch is going up this way. It's going to head up the beyond vertical reverse spike, and that reverse spike is tilted at 100 degrees. That's beyond vertical, and that's the steepest drop on any coaster in Florida, so that's really exciting. So it's four launches, so this launch track is going to be busy. You're going to go backwards, forwards, backwards, and forwards once more, hitting 52 miles an hour. Now, the exciting feature of this launch that makes it a little different than most is we have an airtime hill on either side. So there's one over here, and you can see this one low one over here. So each one of those hits on the launch is going to be a little more powerful as the airtime goes, finally culminating in a nice pop of airtime here as we crest up and over our top hat. That's an 80-foot tall element right there and a near vertical drop off of it. So heading up in, you're going to get really great airtime in the front seat. Heading down off, you're going to get great airtime in the back seat. Now, once you get off of that, uh, that element, you see all these low-to-the-ground airtime hills. There's lots of twists, turns, high-banked corners. Uh, you can see where the track ends right now. We're in the process of just wrapping up the concrete on the other side in our back house area, and we'll be wrapping up that track real, uh, real soon here. And then our return run that comes down here, kind of weaving its way in between columns. It's a lot of really close kind of head chopper moments as you run through there and up into our brakes here. One of the cool features about this attraction is just how tight of a construction site it is. You can see this is the launch track right here, inches from the station. So as riders exit the attraction and go down our exit ramp right here, they're going to have a coaster within inches of them, you know, shooting by, launching four times. It's going to be a really kind of cool feature, really interactive. Uh, down here, we're going to walk a little bit later. You can see our pathway that's getting formed back up. This is the pathway that was here before the construction started. And this is going to take you right underneath of that Beyond Vertical Reverse Bike. So you're going to be able to see that from a whole new angle, look right up to people that are looking straight down at you and uh, having a really, really fun time on the ride. So what you see here is just part of the story because the underground uh, of all this area is a really you know, big undertaking, and that's what takes a lot of the time during this construction process. So there's a lot of concrete underneath of these. You can see the, the various footers that are popping up. That's just part of the overall foundation, which could be as big as, you know, 12 by 12 for some of these individual footers or even larger for others. And there's a lot of electrical involved. So this building right over here is our electrical room, and all of the electrical cabinets for the ride come out of there and feed all of the launch components. Each of these white spikes that you see out here, these uh, white fins, those are called LSM launch stators. So those are what actually propel the train, the magnets that are on the train, to launch this ride back and forth. So it's a really heavy utility project. There's a lot of underground piping, there's a lot of electrical, there's a lot of pneumatic piping, and everything comes together to create the, you know, this exciting ride. 
Uh, on the way in, you walk through our queue line, so that is uh, the, di the former dining area for uh, the Mango Joe's restaurant, which uh, we will have additional seating there, but we'll also have our queue space here. Our interactives talking about uh, the Alaska Sea Life Center, our, our conservation partner for the ride, and the new entrance over here uh, on, on the side. So part of the relaunched Wild Arctic Plaza uh, will be uh, home to Icebreaker here. Take a group picture inside the ice. Dude, we should, I know, yeah. we take Wait, come here. So, uh, even tomorrow, we're going to see concrete here already as we work to put this pathway back. For those of you familiar with our park layout, this used to be a pathway from the bridge up to the Mango Joe's restaurant here in Wild Arctic Plaza. So we're going to put that back. We're going to have this open before the ride opens, actually in several weeks, uh, so we can open that flow back up as we start our Seven Seas Food Festival here in the park. Uh, so some of the key features around here, uh, this is our locker building. Uh, right next to the, the ride entry here. Uh, and then the building right behind you here, uh, the, the metal roof, this is actually the ride entrance. You can see the formwork up for the entry into the ride. So this is where the queue and the quick queue uh, will form up. And then if you want a good unobstructed shot of the spike, you can head around the corner here and just stand by the locker building. So that spike, like we said, it's a 93 foot tall beyond vertical reverse spike. So that's 100 degrees. That's tilted beyond vertical. It's the steepest drop on any coaster in Florida. And you're gonna go backwards up that. So you'll be facing straight down at the ground, you know, waving at all the people who are standing on this pathway. So it's gonna be a really exciting element. You're gonna go up that thing twice. So you'll start by launching backwards once, get about halfway up, go a second time, almost up to the top hat. And then you'll back up a third time, go up the hill again, all the way to the top. You can see those uh, couple of white spikes up there. Those are brake fins. So you'll get right to the top of there before you head down a fourth time hit 52 miles an hour and clear that top hat a little bit up top. Then you'll head off for the rest of the ride. Once that gets clear, the second train is clear to go and slide over and do the rest of the ride. Oh, so they do have some footers back here. And that is it from SeaWorld today. We hope you enjoyed following along with us and uh, hope to see you at the next video. Thank you. Bye.